George, how are you? Thanks so much for joining us. How uh, how have you been these last few months? Uh, I'm good, thanks, Brian. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's strange, isn't it? You know, um, I guess from the Six Nations till now, um, not a lot has happened, but there's a lot been going on. Um, but no, I'm well uh, in one piece, ticking over. Some of us have had an eventful three months. You, a particularly eventful last month. Uh, the birth of your uh, of your first child, Jack. Jack, yeah, Jack without the K, keep it, keep it streamlined well. But yeah, the hospital was interesting. Uh, I can't speak any any higher than uh, what they did at the Heath with, with Becky and, and myself and Jack, they were incredible. Um, and the measures they went through obviously for safety and that, but it is a bit weird when I wasn't allowed in uh, to see Becky until she was pretty much good to go. So I was a bit like, um, keep going Beck. Yeah, you can do it. <laughs> Question the world wants to know with a cyclist as a mother and you as a father, how big are Jack's quads? Um, I would say, uh, because he's only six weeks, he's in proportion. <laughs> but I, I certainly think he's in the, the higher percentiles. <laughs> but even when he's kicking off and he's having a good scream, he's got a dynamic kick. I'll leave it okay. at that, Brian. Good, right. good, good. <laughs> fast twitch, fast twitch. It's important. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's fast twitch. He's certainly he has to be fast careful twitch, of those yeah. hamstring injuries in time. Uh, <laughs> I know, with, with me as well, he's doomed as a player. <laughs> Were you nervous yeah. coming in? Because I remember my first tour in, in 2001 as a 22-year-old. Um, I, wasn't, I wasn't the youngest. I think Huggy was the uh, youngest in 2013, so you weren't the yeah. youngest either. But I remember being nervous going out training every day because the standard was so high and that at any point someone could make you look really, really silly. I don't know if you remember, I didn't really say anything for the first four or five weeks. <laughs> <laughs> I just like a sponge, just don't be late. Don't be late, wear the right kit and don't mess up. <laughs> about the off-field stuff on, on, on Lions, you know, you look back on the videos and, and we think about, you know, the, the fines committees and the laughs that we would have had there. I, you know, anytime a video pops up on social media and it's usually involving Zebo in some capacity. Yeah. But gosh, they were hilarious times. Oh, some of the... Well, obviously the the, the well documented phone calls to uh, the, the dice rolls and stuff. I've never, do you know what? I've, I've never been that anxious and sweaty in a team meeting before because I'm like, oh my god, he's going to answer the phone. <laughs> and that try in the first test, that was a real thing of beauty. Uh, a combination of blind panic and <laughs> I don't know what to do apart from running that. scared <laughs> is a very powerful tool. <laughs> that first try, I think I. I think if you look, if I, when, when, you, when you watch a video back, I think I lie on, on the ball, on the floor for a fair few seconds before Foxy comes and drags me up. And I think it's more disbelief and um, kind of like, oh, I can't swear. So what have I, what's just happened? <laughs> <laughs> and then I guess, yeah, from then, obviously the, the battle commenced then. And um, yeah, what, what, a, what, a, what a test series it was. And one of those like, real iconic images from Lions Rugby is the time that you picked Israel Folau as the second test up. Yeah, no one, no one remembers the uh, the dead duck you gave me between your legs, do they? Oh. <laughs> I was like, cheers, Draco. <laughs> right, 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 above, right above my head as well. I remember, I remember. Like, look, look, at look at the skill on Draco. And I'm like, oh, cheers, pal. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, again, in, in hindsight, um, picking up a man who's 110 kegs plus, at the time seemed like the perfect situation that perfect thing you know i've gone like quick maths and i've gone boom nailed it scoop him and go mm. but as it happened yeah the weight shift and then on my shoulder and then he wrestling ddt'd me didn't he and then almost split my neck in half but <laughs> and then and then obviously you know you went on the second tour in in 2019 it, it, or sorry 2017 i should say and, and it didn't quite pan out the way you would have hoped does it give you um, renewed kind of aspirations to pick up where you left off in 2013 with, with there being a tour to South Africa next year? Um, I, I guess, uh, for, I guess to answer your question in, 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 a, in, a, in a word, it'd be, I'd love to, I would love, I honestly, to, put, to have that, um, to be able to tour the lines again would be huge. Obviously, you've got to be playing your best rugby, you want, you want to be flying by then and, you know, coming back to Wales and having the glimpse of feeling like me again and playing like me, you know, towards the end of the Six Nations, I, I, you know, I, I want to be in those mixes. I want to be in that that fold, you know, I want to be in those conversations again. And 
you know, for me, there were two very different tours. You know, 2013, um, it, it, I, it was incredible. And 2017 was, um, a, a, for me, physically, but also mentally a lot harder. You know, I was at Northampton at the time. We got caught in that weird seventh playoff, you know, mm. where you then have to play an extra two games. Mm. And then it happened, so in those two games, I, um, I popped a rib out. Then I also popped Messi out as well. <laughs> And then you're going out to New Zealand, probably one of the hardest places to tour. You've got already, what, 20 odd games, hard, hard games, you know, 25, 26 games in you. You've just popped the rib out, you just popped an SC out, but you're never ever going to turn down the opportunity to represent the Lions. You know, as you well know, you can get yourself ready. And I was like, I'm going to go and try and make the biggest impact as I could. I didn't get picked for the first test, so that obviously put a bit in my teeth and I was chomping to go. Um, and then I got picked for the midweek game. And then basically, I think I, well, I think Robbie Henshaw went off with, he melted his shoulder in the first like five minutes. So I went from the sting on into 13, which is fine, playing 13. And at that point, I think my body just gave out and I, there was nothing I could do. You know, my, everything was hanging on. <laughs> my lungs were on the floor. Uh, and then my hamstring tore like towards the end of the first half. And then I, I just thought to myself, well, do you know what I mean? I, it's not too bad. I'll plod on, plodded on, got to half time, got strapped up, came back out the second half and then did a proper job of it then. And I just thought, well, if this is, you know, if this is my last time in a Lions jersey, I want to give it everything until I can't walk. And which sounds heroic, but then when you tear your hamstring and you can't walk, <laughs> it's not <laughs> ideal. So. That still fuels me today, you know, the feeling I had, I was like, I never want to feel like this again. And, and it, again, that was one of the reasons to come back to Wales and one of the reasons that, um, you know, I, I, you know, 100% focused, hopefully, on the future as it, as it happens. How much do you think players play down, you know, the injuries that they have, particularly in an environment like that, where, it's, you know, it's a short, concerted period of time, six or seven weeks, you know, you can't go in, go in with brutal honesty and tell the coach how poorly you're feeling. You've got to go in and go, put me in, I'm ready to go. Okay, I'll flip that round. How many times has a coach asked you, Brian, and gone, how are you feeling, mate? And you've gone, great. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. Emoji. Good. Yeah, good, good, good to go. Why is that? What, why, what's wrong? Yeah, I don't think, I don't think it's in our DNA that when someone says, are you all right? Obviously, we're big burly men, and you know when when the time is right, you say, "Oh no, I'm I'm struggling here," you know, but this is hanging on. But when when you've only got a short window, there's I don't think there's anything you wouldn't do to be in that position. You know what I mean? And I, I don't I wouldn't change it. It's taught me a lot about myself and looking after myself and speaking up, especially when you're not right. But when you have those opportunities, there's no way when he says the coach goes, "How are you feeling? You're good to go." you're, I'm like 110%, I am ready to go. And then you work out the details afterwards, don't you? You just yeah. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. strap me up and, do you know what I mean? You get until yourself until you make it, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations on the arrival of, of Jack. Send our best to Becky and good luck yeah. for the coming season when we do kick rugby off again. And, and hopefully we might see you on a third Lions tour at the end of next summer. Thank you very much. Cheers, bro. <laughs>